All right. Enix. Wow. Nah, never mind. I've made that reference before. Well, where is the audio? No music? Oh, it is from 2000. Okay. A few years before the Square Enix merger. Yeah. I previewed these games last year. Game Boy Color remakes of the first three games, one and two on, their, on a combined cartridge and three on its own. But a lot of people have suggested I play it, and I kind of want to anyways. I already did a playthrough of the NES original last year. So, I mean, don't worry, I'm still going to finish Dragon Quest V and do 6, 7, and 8. But for now, nostalgia kick. Another version of the first game. Now, again, I've said my bit on the so-called default names for the heroes in these games in other Dragon Quest playthroughs. So, I mean, I personally... Eh, Oh, great, there goes the sound again. They're going to keep doing that. The hell. Personally, I have my doubts about that, like I said before. If they were meant to be the names, they'd be in the game. Not in reviewer copies, but in the finished, in the finished game available for everyone. Not just in fan manga, but in the finished games playable by everyone, if they were meant to be the hero's name. Anyways, that's my opinion on that history, if you will. Besides, I just usually call them, I just usually give them my name, as you can tell if you've seen my RPGs already. But the only exception to that would be Zelda, where the hero obviously does have a default name, Link. Not just, not just in the manga, or in quote-unquote reviewer copies, but actually in the games. Anyways. Yeah, you can definitely tell it's a Game Boy game. Well, Game Boy Color, technically, but... I mean, game Boy Color, technically, was just a colorized version of the original as far as technical. I mean, it may have, may have had a little bit more processor speed or technical jargon like that. It may have been a little bit more advanced than the original Game Boy, but not by much. It was basically just a colorized version of the original Game Boy. To the best of my knowledge, anyways, I mean, I could be wrong about that, but What? Did it reset? Okay, come on. There we go. No, come on. Bad, bad. Okay, some video. Get to watch the same cutscene a second time. At least I have that cutscene. They didn't even have that in the NES original. Of course, I've never seen the Japanese original, so I don't know if that was something that was cut from the American version of the game, or... I mean, for part two, you had that American introduction of Haragon's minions raiding Moonbrew Castle that wasn't even in the Japanese original. There it was vice versa. I mean, usually in RPGs, the Japanese version has more to it. Stuff that gets deleted from the American version for censorship or whatever other cockamamie excuse they come up with for taking content out. But for Dragon Quest II, NES original is the other way around. They actually added that sequence. And it's been constant in every remake since, but... Anyways... Loto. Oh, good God, I forgot about that. In the American original of the, of the first game, first three games actually, it was Erdrick. I mean, all three of the first three games have been 
become known as the Erdrich Trilogy here in the States. I guess in Japan it would be the Loto Trilogy. I don't know, I think Erdrick sounds better. I mean, with Loto, you just need to add one more team, you got Lotto. Lottery? Oh, okay. Again, I don't know, I just think Erdrick sounds better. The Draco Lord? Thought it was the Dragon Lord. Now it's the Draco Lord. What, they couldn't use the word Dragon? Or maybe it was too many letters for a Game Boy. But again, I don't know, it would have only been one more letter to add, you know, one, change that C to a G and add an N in there, it would have only been one more letter, Dragon Lord. Oh, well. Well. Obviously, that's not his name in this version of the game, but for the duration of this playthrough, since it is in all of the other versions of the game, including the more recent Switch version from a few years ago, I'm going to refer to him as the Dragon Lord, as it always is in every other version I've ever seen or played. Draco Lord, my left... Never mind, you get the idea. No need to get graphic here, but... Same with the, granted I don't think it's going to be brought up too many more times in this game, but same with the legendary hero of old, Screw Loto, it's Erdrick. The way it has been in every other version of the, of the first three games, whenever he's talked about the Erdrick trilogy. Anyways. That said, well, at least we don't have to group it. select menu, open chests, just go up to it and hit the A button like every other, well, except for the original, all of the other remakes I've played. Well, listen to me say all of the other remakes, like I've played an abundance of them. Just the NES original and the Switch version of the game, the only two versions of this game that I've really played. Still haven't played the Super Nintendo, of course, that's because I was never officially released here in the States. To this day, I don't think that's ever, the Super Nintendo version has ever been released, or not even on a virtual console or collection, digitally. The only way you're going to play that is emulators. Yeah. Yeah, you can definitely tell it's a Game Boy game. Looks like the Game Boy equivalent to, or the Drag, let me rephrase that, looks like the Game Boy Dragon Quest equivalent to Link's Awakening Zelda game, graphically, or Oracle of Ages. Okay, so, if this is like all of the other versions of the game, you want to go equip, buy and equip yourself. Oh, okay, it's like the NES original. The hero's character sprite isn't shown holding any weapons or armor. Or... They don't do that in the Switch version of the game. You, you always see him carrying a sword, even if you don't have one. Club. Would like to buy the copper sword, but... As usual in these kind of games, whether it's Dragon Quest, Final Fantasy, Etrian Odyssey, or whatever, RPG games across the board, you're the chosen hero destined to save the entire world, yet they only give you 50 to 100 bucks to do so with. 100 bucks, not even, as you're seeing, not even enough to buy the be to buy decent weapons and armor to start your adventure with. Gee, thanks. Thanks for your overwhelming generosity. 120 bucks. I can't even buy a copper sword with that. And even a copper sword won't go very far. I mean, you ain't gonna get very far even with the copper sword once you do get one. Now, because I bought the club, 
I don't have enough for the leather armor. So I gotta get clothes, which are, should be already wearing. What am I, naked? Um, never mind. Forget I said that. And again, okay, just like the original, auto-equip. Unlike the first Final Fantasy game or most other... Uh, or most other RPGs for that matter. Again, I focus on the first Final Fantasy game because as I've said in other playthroughs, other games, the original NES version of this being the first ever RPG game I played back in the fall of 1989, just after it came out. Spent the rest of 89 and the first parts of 1990 playing through it for the first time. Then comes the first Final Fantasy game released here in the spring summer of 1990 second RPG I'd played. Having played so much of the first Dragon Quest game, I get to thinking, okay, weapons and armor automatically equip. <laughs> yeah, right, not in the first Final Fantasy game, they did. Lesson learned the hard way. Find my weapons thinking they automatically equip, go out to fight a random battle, and my party gets their butt kicked by a group of goblin imps because I didn't equip anything. Yeah. I mean, I've told that story before, but still. Something I'll never forget. What? I just bought all that stuff and I'm still losing? Uh 33 years later and I still remember that crap. As if it were yesterday. After all that money I spent on that armor and weapons and I'm still getting my... Hey! <coughs> it is still here. Dragon skill. Extra armor. No, that's not what I wanted to do. No, not yet. Oh, you can save anywhere, huh? Field log. I guess that's like auto save. Uh oh. Okay. Talking about lessons learned the hard way. Let's not do that again. It resets your game. Okay. Did it say at least save my game before? Okay. So it's like saving your game at the with the owl statues in the N in the N64 original of Majora's Mask. It saves your game, but as soon as you load that save file, the save file is deleted. And if you don't make another one, um, uh, yeah. Okay, let's not do that again. It's like the auto save option in the 3DS version of Dragon Quest 7. It auto saves your game, but you have to shut it off afterwards. You can't keep playing after making that auto save. It's about one of the few. One of the few gripes I have with the 3DS remake of Dragon Quest 7. Like, what if I want to keep playing? After I make an autosave, I gotta either shut the 3DS off or just shut that game down and reload it. Yay, thank you. Anyways, where's the... Okay, that's... Info. What... Well, hold on, what the heck? Okay, well, I already... Okay, 13 hit points. Defense, 4. Equip that. Yeah, okay. Extra five defense points. Not much, but good starting out, since you usually are only fighting slimes. Okay, they're still called red slimes here. In most of the recent games, they've been called she slimes. As if slimes are supposed to have gender or something, I guess. I 
mean, I guess it makes sense. They're living things. Of course, there's going to be male and female. And... Well, not always. I mean, the Gorons and Zelda games, I don't think... I don't think there's ever been a female Goron in a Zelda game. Ever since Ocarina of Time when the Gorons were first introduced into Zelda games. Okay, come on, game. Oh, goody, here we go again. When you want the random battles, they seem to take forever to happen. But when you're just trying to get through the dungeon as fast as possible, yeah, you get the idea. I've made that reference before, too. But... Okay, the music. Basically a Game Boy rendition of the original NES music track. Good God, even that battle theme is still... I mean, it's okay for the nostalgic value, I guess, like I was talking to someone about online. It's okay if you're really nostalgic into that battle theme, but back in the day, the battle theme you're hearing, the NES equivalent to it, one of the reasons I kept always turning off the sound on the TV and putting on whatever rock album I felt like playing and having that be the music for my gameplay. I don't know, just something, no. I would have rather heard Skid Row's debut album than that battle theme. Which back in summer, fall 1989, either this first Skid Row album or the fourth Keel album, the two albums I was listening to the most often back in those days, provided the music for many video game playthroughs during that time span. Oh, I'm going to play this game, but I'm not listening to that music. Turn the sound on on the TV, put in one of those, you, know, you get the idea. Of course, for the fans of those soundtracks, relax. I was back then, you know, since then, you know, I don't mind the NES music as much. Just at the time, teenage me, as I still would have been a teenager in those days, 1989, December would have been my 18th birthday, so yeah. Something about, you know, didn't like them back then. Like, oh god, this music sucks. Turn down the TV, well, yeah. Okay, I gotta remember, that's the search button. Okay. Dang it, I did it again. Okay, where's the... Okay. Oh, I already got a level up, wow. I was that busy talking, I didn't even notice I'd gotten a level up. Way to go, me. Me and my big fat mouth. So busy yapping, I... Yeah. Okay, so I got up to level 2 already. Okay. So I need another 10 more points. 23 total to get up to level 3. And 47 for level 4. 110 for level 5. 220 for level 6, 450 for level 7, 800 for level 8, 1300 for level 9, that is if it still has the original NES level up table. And yes, yes, again, that's how many times I've played this game, be it the NES original or, or the Switch remake. That's how many times I've played this game over the decades, that I have pretty much the entire experience level up table memorized to this day, as I said here playing this game now. This and the first Zelda game. 
games that I would go back to so many times whenever I was tired of, whenever I needed a break from the new game I was playing my way through for the first time, just go back and play either this game or the first Zelda game. Or sometimes even the first Final Fantasy game. Pay attention. No, I didn't want to search the ground. I wanted to bring up. Okay, still got 13 hit points. I'll oh, get that cursor out of here. Okay, that's one thing I'm thinking about this just now. Well, actually, I thought about it the other day while playing this game on the Switch. Or actually, on my phone, rather. The NES version is the only one that that dialog box, or that info box in the upper left corner also said what level you were in and how much money you had per in total. Why is it the NES version did that and none of the remakes, including this one, have done that? Just the original. Well, the American original, anyways. Again, I don't know if the Japanese original from 1986 did that or not. points and four gold. Four gold? Okay, they... I guess it's like the Switch, or the mobile version. Switch, or for phone, both. Since as I've been noticing, the Switch version is basically just a Switch part of the mobile phone version of the game. As I've been noticing over the last couple of weeks since I got the mobile phone version of the game. Okay. Heal. Now I need another 23 more points for 47 in total. Yeah. 24 points, rather. So, so far, it seems like it still has the same exp I don't see why it wouldn't. The, the mobile slash Switch version of the game it still has it. Well, for the most part, it has the same experience level up table. I mean, there were a few alterations to it later on that I noticed. Around level 16 and 17, you need a, the points you need for that level up are changed a little bit, but... Again, urban legend, walking in the hill areas increases random encounter rates. Maybe in some of the newer Dragon Quest games, yes, but in these older original ones, no. Of course, this isn't the original of the That isn't, if at all, that isn't something they started doing until much later. At least as far as I've noticed, anyways. 
so you're walking in the so-called hills or on flat grassland or whatever terrain you're walking in. It doesn't seem to affect random battle encounter rate in these older games. See what I mean? Yeah. Again, maybe in the newer games, but... that again. Nope. Of course not. Hmm. Good thing I got the level up table pretty much memorized. Since... As I've mentioned in other Dragon Quest playthroughs of my own and in Dragon Quest streams done by other people, as is, tra as is Dragon Quest tradition, they'll tell you how many experience points you have, but they don't tell you how many you need for your next level up. The only RPG series I've ever played that does that. At least to tell the 3DS remake of Part 8 and Part 11. Or the new side game treasures. The only three Dragon Quest games I've ever played that actually tell you how many points you need for your next level up. Without having to go to a king or a church or use Gwalen's love item or the divination spell or just have it in your menu, your status screens normally, like any other RPG. Why was that so hard for Enix to program? Come on. There you go. Get up to level four. By the way, how much money do I have? Should have enough by now to get uh, only 98. Of course, I've only been fighting slimes and red slimes. So yeah. Well, that's enough to get another, to get the next armor upgrade. Showing the grinding on screen right now. But if the enemy experience you get is going to be more in tune with the original, the slow grinding that that would entail probably won't show all that. If by some chance the, the amount of experience in gold enemies drop in this version of the game is more in line with the Switch mobile version that I've been playing lately, then I'll show more of the grinding because it won't take as long, but... But if this is like the NES original, no. Dang it! Am I ever gonna learn? Okay, five more points.
Give me another red slime. Double experience. There we go. One more battle, regardless of what, whether it's a blue slime or a red slime. Got it. Fireball. Okay. Says in the Switch version, or Switch and Mobile version of the game, or Hurt in the NES, here's Fireball. Anyways, now that I have that, well, first off. Hundred fourteen. Right. Well, they actually tell you the stat difference. Okay, that's an improvement over the NES original. They didn't tell you that. Yes. Uh, no, I don't have any. Don't have enough money for anything else. Okay, now I have a shield in my little pixel sprite animation there. Alright. $10 for an herb. Buy a couple of these just in case. Emergency heal backup. Never hurts to have those just in case anything goes drastically wrong while grinding or whatnot. By the way, what's with this stairway? That wasn't there before. Ah, what? What? Who are you looking like looking like a Game Boy equivalent to the hero uh, or the main <coughs> soldier knight hero character in the first Final Fantasy game? Graphics sprite wise. Tandigel Castle. Yeah, Castle Sharlock. I mean, Dragon Lord's Castle. But yeah, that guy. Sprite wise, looks like the Game Boy equivalent to the first Final Fantasy game. The knight, fighter, warrior, whatever job play. At least that's what it reminds me of. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but... Who's Laura? Is that the name they gave Gwalen in this version of the game? Okay, I don't remember this. Because, of course, I haven't... It's been ages since I bothered talking to anyone in as I've played the game so many times I know where I'm going. I don't need to talk to anybody. Town of Ten... Eh! It's supposed to be the town of Breconary. At least in the original NES. All of the remakes, they... Castle of Tantigel or Tantigo, however you want to pronounce it. I've heard it pronounced both ways. This is the castle. The town is, well, at least in the original, is separate. Reconary. Hey, where'd that lady go? Ditched me already, huh? How typical. Anyways, how much does the end cost here? Three, okay, just like the Switch mobile version of the game. Six in the NES original. Alright. Now, 
since I don't have a whole lot of money left to lose, if I end up dying, I ain't gonna lose a whole lot. Because now that I have the Hurt spell, or the Sizz spell, or the Fireball spell, whatever you want to call that spell, there's like so many things in RPGs, it goes by different names depending on what version of the game you're actually playing. We go down here to this bottom row. Normal Drakis. Well, this is supposed to be a Magi Draki. Whatever they call it in the Switch version of the game, I forget. Oh shoot, that's right, I think I noticed that in the preview. That's right, I remember now, I think I noticed that in the preview of this game, the brief preview of this game I did last year, with part two and part three, the three games in one video kind of thing that I did last year. I think I noticed that then too. They took that out of this game. Or out of this version of the game. Well, that sucks. I like using that in both on Switch or on my phone. There's this bottom row down here. You can get Magi, Drakis, Scorpions, or Magicians. Get more experience and gold quicker. Making this next step in level grinding a lot faster. That kind of sucks that they removed that. It's like removing the so-called power potential on the first Final Fantasy game. Oh, boy, wait a minute. They actually did that in the Pixel remaster of that game. Middle fingers to Square Enix for that one, by the way. They actually did that. They didn't remove the peninsula. They just took the enemies out of there. Middle fingers. Middle fingers to Square Enix for that one. Okay, so I'm wasting my time down here. Well, that is so stupid. They make these games where grinding is part of the game. They have, in some of the versions of the games, parts that make that a little less tedious, a little less long and annoying. And then you got versions of the game like this that remove that. Oh, goody. All right, fine. So much for this idea. All right, be that way. Screw you, Enix. You assholes. Take that out of there. Take my middle finger out of your face, Enix. Developers who did this game. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, it's over there. Okay. That cave. Granted, there's nothing in that cave except for that tablet, the treasure chest. Yeah. Spooky or just ghost.
back to Breckenary. And yes, that's what I'm calling it. That's what it was originally known, originally named. No, not the end, not yet. Not yet. Thinking too far ahead too quickly here. Besides, I don't really need to say at the end anyways. This is what I came back here for. Silly me. 73. Only two points. Oh well. Better than no... Better than no upgrade at all, I guess. Besides, due to how much grinding you have in this game, I usually buy everything anyways. Each upgrade, use it for a while as I'm up, you know, doing the grinding for the net, for the money to buy the next one in line. And through the course of the game, end up buying every armor and weapon upgrade. Since, you know, Again, you know, this, the, the, what do they, how do they put that, the great, the granddaddy of the JRPGs, and also the most grind-heavy game I have ever played. As I said in my NES playthrough, my playthrough of the NES original last year, and many other videos related to it, like 75-80% grinding. As anybody that's ever played the game can account to or account for already themselves as well. Can attest to rather better put. Mostly grinding. But just a little story mixed in. You know. And even then, generic story. Hey, bad guy taking over. Go stop him, hero boy. Do your job for once. You know, basic 80s story. Which was okay, you know, back in the day story, you know, gameplay was the thing. You know, story, eh, most games didn't have, you know, if there was any story at all, again, it was just, go save the world, hero, get going, it's your job, do it. That was your story. And even then, a lot of old games in the 80s, early 90s, it wasn't even in the game itself, it was in the instruction manual. Especially in the 80s. That awkward time transferring from arcade game style to home consoles. Where a lot of games were you know, more arcade. Like Contra and Rygar and Mario. I never minded that though. In fact, I got used to it. You know, if I wanted, like I used to tell people, if I wanted, got to the point where if I wanted a story, I'd read a book or watch a movie, play games for the gameplay. I mean, sure, it's nice when games have good stories, I guess, but a good story does not a good game make. Case in point, Final Fantasy IV. Pretty good story for early 90s RPGs, but the rest of the game. Hmm. Let's just say I'm not impressed. Never have been since late 1991 when that game first came out in North America. Granted, it was called Final Fantasy II in those days, but. Gameplay. If the gameplay is abysmal, who cares how good the story is? Final Fantasy IV. Twilight Princess. Zelda game. Just because it has a good story doesn't mean the game is good. Now 
like I'm going to set through a bad game just for a good story. Sorry, I'm not that I'm not that desperate for a good story. If I was, there's plenty of books I could read. Anyways, yeah. just trying to find something to talk about as I do my grinding here. I mean, if you like Final Fantasy, as usual, if you like Final Fantasy IV or the Zelda game Twilight Princess, don't mind me. You know, hey, to each to each their own. I'm sure I like a lot of games that you don't, so hey, we're even. It works both ways. Just like with when I talk about music, I'm sure I like a lot of bands that people would rather forget existed in the first place. So, hey. Sarah, Sarah. If you like Twilight Princess, hey, that's good. I don't, but... so busy yapping about this and that and everything else. Haven't really been paying attention to how many experience points I'm getting here. Okay, it's a little more than the NES original as I remember, but... Yeah. So grinding is going to take a while. Not like the Switch version of the game. Okay, he gives the same amount of money as he does in the Switch or mobile phone version of the game. Four experience and eight golds. Okay. Cross bridge, which some usually leads you to stronger enemy domains. Usually, maybe not always, but... Oops! Uh, do I want to fight this? Okay, well, let's do that this way. Because I don't think I'm strong enough to, to beat him with melee, physical attack, weapons. Yeah, okay. So experience table from enemies, the amount of experience and gold you get this does seem to be more in line with the Switch mobile version of the game. 16... Experience in 25 gold, okay. So maybe grinding won't take as long. Well, that'll be good if that really is the case and not just for a couple enemies here and there. I mean, it still sucks they took out that enemy domain down there just south of the starting area. Have to go all the way over here to fight these enemies, but oh well. Oh, there's a... Okay. Ow! Oh, you want to do that, huh? Well, guess what? I can do that too, Buster. How do you like it? Taste of your own medicine. Ha 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 ha. 12 and 20. Yeah, okay. Just like this. All right. Well, at least that's good. Grinding won't take as long. Repeat it again. The amount of experience and gold you get. Magician. Yeah, and yes, original name for this enemy. Forget what they're called in the Switch mobile version of the game. Ow! Ow! That hurt! You turd. Okay, I only have four MP, so... Um... Yow. Good thing I bought those. Okay, 
how much money do I have now, by the way? Okay, good. I have enough. No, let's not do that. Of course, now I don't have enough to heal myself if I need to. But that's okay. Oh, to that stronger enemy area. I should be able to make it back to town alive. Oh yeah, now definitely. What's the worst enemy in this area? Slimes. I mean, frick, if I can't beat a slime, I need to stop playing this game. I mean, seriously. If I die to a slime, I need to hang up my controller. For all time. I'm back again. Six point upgrade. Club, sell back. Thirty. Not enough to get anything from here with. That's okay, actually I don't they don't have anything here I need anymore now. Go over here and buy for one, replace the herb I used. And buy a couple more. Actually I want to see some. How many was that? Six. I don't have enough money, dang it. I wanted to test that theory. If six is still the maximum you're allowed to carry. Something that I'm pretty sure I mentioned in my NES playthrough last year. Why they decided on six. I mean, if it has to be a single digit figure, why not nine? Anyways. that'll do it for this video. Already, wow, already 54 minutes. Holy crap. Time just flies when I play this game. I have the same problem. Switch and mobile phone version of the game. Take my work break, sit down, start playing the game, and before I know it, break is over. I'm like, oh, great, I gotta go back to work already. Crap. Yeah. Where did the time go? Oh, yeah, I'm playing this game. That's where. Yeah. Anyways, I think that'll do it for the first video. Won't take too many videos for this. I mean, it is a grinding aside. It is a short game, as I've said before, and most people who have played it know by now. Should take more than seven videos at the most, if even that. Anyways, as always, thanks for watching. See you next time. And again, just to reassure anybody who's been following my channel. This does not mean I'm giving up on Dragon Quest V or my plans to do any of the other games. This is just what you'd call a side project, for lack of better terms. Just nostalgia kick. Yeah. Anyways, again, thanks for watching, and see you next time. Bye.